St Andrew's Square, so this was the previously the, the last stop on the tram line. So we're about to go. Uh, next stop is Picardy Place. So here we go. So the reason we're going to Ocean Terminal um, is that's because we, that's where the Royal Yacht Britannia is. It's quite a big uh, tourist attraction. Um, it's also a shopping centre and a cruise terminal. And way back in 2014, um, when I, I did two trips on the, the Herta, um, which is the fisheries protection vessel, I actually joined the ship in Ocean Terminal. And at the time, you could only get a bus uh, from Waverley uh, to the Ocean Terminal. I thought at the time, what, what a great idea it would be to extend the tram line down there, which had been the original plan, but at that time the, the tram only went as far as St Andrews Square, where we just were. So it's good to see now the tram line actually being extended down there. So this is the first, first time I've been on this part of the line. That's the, this is Leith Walk we're coming on to now. So this is all new tram track. Playhouse looks busy, which is good, so the, the tram will serve that now. <laughs> this stop, oh, you can't see it for that tram there, but um, it's gonna move and we're gonna be able to see um, Harbin Hobbies, uh, the famous uh, model railway shop there. So this is the stop to come to if you want to get your model trains. So I'm going to film this. Look at the uh, absolute state of this bike lane, by the way, because this is, like I say, this is one of the most controversial parts of the, the scheme. And it's uh, very wiggly. It's not really separated from the footpath. Uh, so the you know, pedestrians walking all over it. And you know, you've got bits like that drop curb where there's a, a camber on it. So um, a lot of cyclists saying, yeah, it's, it's actually quite dangerous to cycle on. And it doesn't go in a straight line. You've got all these wiggles around junctions. Not the best design at all. Oh, and there's a parked car right on top of it. Yeah, great. Let's park some cars on the bike lane. Or, oh, there's a Paris <laughs> fence on the bike lane. So, yeah, definitely a uh, bit of an obstacle course. So, this is coming into the port of Leith. Here, how they've got the, this little bit of grass in between the, the tram tracks. I say it's not much, but it's, not. it's something. Yeah. So we can do a bit of uh, ship spotting here. Um, Coming on the right, that's Fingal. That is a, an old boy tender that's now been refitted as a luxury floating hotel. And if we look at the other side, uh, 
that's the old swing bridge that used to uh, provide entrance to that dock. That's been replaced by the bridge that we're on, which is not a swing bridge, so if those boats in there ever want to leave, they can't. They're kind of stuck in there. And back over there we've got the Universal Royal Naval Unit training ship. Uh, P26-4 HMS Archer, uh, Apache 2, is that big Technic cable there, and RFA Fort Victoria. As in the port. This is cool, there's actually somebody's built a Lego model of the Royal Yacht. Pretty detailed as well. I might not be able to see it through the glass, but this is Prince Philip's actual uniform. That was donated, only donated to the museum last year, uh, 2022, so it's the first time it's been seen well, on display. Yet. And there it is, what we've come here to see, the Royal Yacht Britannia. So, this isn't how you normally would have ordered the Britannia when it was in service, but since it was docked here, uh, they kind of cut a hole in the side of the ship and put the entrance right up here on the bridge deck. The one thing you notice about the bridge here, yeah, there, is, there isn't a wheel, because the Britannia was built like a warship, the actual wheelhouse was below decks, and communication with the, the helmsman was by a voice pipe. Uh, the actual ship's wheel is um, on display ashore in the museum. So another th weird thing I always find about the, the way they um, built this museum was you don't just use the ship's stairs to go down the next level, you've got to go back out and uh, back into the shopping centre and down the stairs to go down a level. We've gone out and we're coming back in again. That's the Admiral's cabin. Oh, yes. This Admiral has Lancashire tea. A senior oh dear, oh dear. Not pretty good. So previously when I visited uh, the Britannia they had a, a Rolls Royce in here but they've swapped that out and they've now got a Land Rover on display. So what we've got here on top of the, the Royal Apartments they built this so that's not an original part of the ship. That's the, the sun lounge. Mm. And coming through into the oil apartments here. This is a very comfortable part of the ship. But I love this photo here. Three generations. So Edward the Seventh, George the the Fifth to be, um, obviously it was Prince of Wales when this photo was taken, and his two kids who would uh, later become the, well Edward VIII, but then of course he uh, quit the job and uh, George VI, his uh, young brother became king. That's them on a, an earlier royal yacht. This looks very much like the, the Queen's bedroom. Reminds me of my grandma's bedroom <laughs> with the, the white panelling, sort of floral motifs. And uh, it's an old uh, painting of the 
former Royal Yacht Victoria and Albert, which, uh, which obviously this ship replaced. Press the, the Duke of Edinburgh's bedroom. Similar to the Queen's bedroom, but with fewer flowers and frills. The infamous honeymoon suites, the only double bed on the ship. More modern photos of the royal family, all in uh, uniform. This is a cool little thing. We've got the. Um, they're actually telescopes for the commander, the first lieutenant, duty lieutenant commander, and officer of the day. Very interesting little detail. There's a little mail uh, slot there. This so we're in the wardroom now. This is a, another painting of the old. Victoria and Albert. Which, again, it was quite a large yacht for its day with two funnels. And uh, over the ceiling fan, that's the wombat. <laughs> We've got a lovely silver <coughs> trophy in the, in the back behind the bar there. That's the actual button taken from the coat of Admiral Nelson. Presented the boardroom of the York Victoria in Albert in 1925. For that touch of flair, the Royal Marines Band went not on Royal. And we're kind of in the working part of the ship here, the, the kitchens. Surprisingly, a very large kitchen. Patches with all the, the crockery and silverware. A lot of these items were taken from previous Royal Yachts. They're very old. So this the state dining room, uh, used for grand formal occasions as well as royal dinners. It's a massive room for the for a ship's dining room. This is an interesting event. It's a chart from the Coronation Review of 1953. You look at some of the ships on there. You see the Empire Windrush uh, is included among the famous ships. Lots of. Can't really have it. See if there's a Vanguard. Purpose last battleship Vanguard is on there. Oh, there it is, Eagle. Uh, the fact of all the illustrious old aircraft carriers. It's a magnificent. Souvenir. And again, the Silver Jubilee review in 1977. Unfortunately, there was no uh, naval review this year for Charles uh, the Third's coronation, so it's quite a pity. It's obviously the Queen's office. <coughs> so the way the, the ship has been interpreted, they've obviously removed a lot of the original panelling and put in windows so you can actually see into the rooms. But this is quite a grand area, big grand staircase and a, a lift in the middle. That mahogany bookcase in the ante room here was taken from the, the Victoria and Albert. This is interesting, that's uh, Prince Philip's mess dress uniform. Together with the ante room and dining room, could accommodate up to 200. So we're now into the petty officers, petty officers and sergeants' mess, which kind of feels like just a pub. Our typical petty officers' berthing space: six men to to a room. So we're into the, the chief petty officers' cabin now, which look rather more comfortable than the petty officers, but you know, yeah, you're still sharing. And the beds are not big. There's not a lot of space there. Another thing you'll notice on the, the uh, on this deck is these clerk controls for the watertight doors down below the engine room. They're just big handles to turn uh, rather than being hydraulic. It may seem a bit ominous, but uh, this is the operating theatre on board. Britannia, when it was built, it was actually envisaged that it would have a, a secondary function as a hospital ship. It was never actually used as such. But it still carried uh, 
a doctor and the two medical staff, um, just in case. There's a, a doctor's surgery in here uh, as well. It's actually the ship's laundry. For such a, a small vessel, Britannia had a substantial laundry. Um, probably bigger than many warships. But of course, all the uniforms had to be immaculate for doing royal duties. Not to mention the clothes of the guests themselves. This is the royal barge. So used for when the ship was at anchor. This would be used to uh, take the, the royal party to the shore. So for me, this is the highlight of the tour. Unfortunately, it's all behind the glass. But this is the actual engine room in Britannia, which was a steamship, it was a steam turbine powered. Um, yeah, it's just a shame you can't get in about the uh, machinery spaces like you can on HMS Belfast, for instance. Uh, it was very clean, very shiny. Of course, being a 1950s steamship, there's no nice, comfortable engine control room to sit in. Um, so it's all controlled from this uh, manoeuvre platform here with all the these big valves, which are hard to see through the glass. So we're now into the, the junior mates or yachtsman's accommodation, which is obviously everyone's sharing this space. Not a lot of privacy here. Britannia, being a steamship, it was, it was very labour intensive to run, so I had a surprisingly large crew. This is cute. This is a little dinghy called Tui, which was uh, presented to. Queen Elizabeth, possibly for teaching Prince Charles to sail in. Uh, but it was presented by uh, New Zealand, I believe. So it was uh, during, during, presented as a gift during a visit to New Zealand. But yeah, cute little, cute little thing. So again, we're getting into the damage control part of the ship. So you've got generator room supply and exhaust fan, emergency stops and fire flaps supply and exhaust uh, for the generator room so this this is the generator room uh, entrance here the generator on uh, or the standby generator on uh, Britannia I believe the diesel engine on it was taken from an old submarine and was uh, nicknamed Chitty Chitty Bang Bang uh, it's the boiler room entrance around here you've got the uh, junior rates bathrooms which you can just tell how many people are employed on the ship by the number of showers and sinks in there. And again, diesel oil uh, emergency valve shut off. Over here we've got uh, cowslip. This is the Flying 15 dinghy that was uh, presented as a wedding present for the Queen and Prince Philip. And we have got a Rolls Royce state limousine. So this is a Rolls-Royce Phantom 5. It does actually say here, while this is a model similar to the Queen's last Rolls-Royce, it is not a royal car. Um, so this vehicle was actually owned by Patrick Vavasa Fisher, the fourth Baron Fisher. So it's, if you want to see the real ro uh, Royal Rolls-Royce, I guess you've got to go down to the Royal Mews in London. But it's, it's a nice car nonetheless. So that was the Royal Yacht Britannia. Quite a big ship for a yacht. Um, I think I don't think there's any chance of it ever being replaced. Even though occasionally someone will come along and say we should get a replacement yacht. Uh, it's never going to happen. Uh, I think it did. It would have to be diesel. It would have to be unmanned machinery space to reduce the manning levels, and it would have to be a lot smaller. Um, but there it is. Um, what do you think of the Royal Yacht? Should we get a replacement? Uh, answers in the comments. And back to the trams. We just missed this one. <laughs> Thank you.
brand brand new just open tram stop and the yeah the the, the seats already come loose like should have put some locks out on the bolt We've uh, just jumped on this tram and we're just going to take it all the way around to New Haven at the end of the lining and then come back again. This is cool because we're going around this corner you can actually see the front of the tram from the very back. So this is it, New Haven, the end of the line. Let's go back into town. That's all for this video, see you next time.